Welcome to Tech Blueprint, a window that lets you know the latest technology news in the world. The United States just couldn't sit still again. China's imports of lithography machines in the first quarter soared to 2.167 billion US dollars, a year-on-year -year increase of 290.4%. Not only did the number increase sharply, but the key is that a large number of equipment did not directly enter the production line, but mysteriously disappeared. The United States originally thought that a set of restrictions could strangle the Chinese chip industry, but unexpectedly, this round of operations forced China to take a new path in technological breakthroughs. China's large-scale stockpiling of lithography machines is actually a confrontation with the United States. The United States has continuously upgraded export controls, drawn a 24-item equipment blacklist for China, and put 140 companies into the blacklist club. Every DUV lithography machine that ASML wants to send to China must pass the Dutch government. You block an inch, and I advance a foot. The United States wants to cut off the bloodline of China's chips, but we buy a lot of new equipment and move back all that can be bought in advance. Don't think that China only buys lithography machines to stock up a bunch of iron sheets to show its presence. Some equipment did enter the mainstream production line directly, but many were sent to the laboratory and became anatomical specimens for Chinese researchers. American expert Miller's words couldn't be clearer. When China got the lithography machine, the first thing it did was not to start making chips, but to disassemble it for research. Every laser, every set of objective lenses, and even the stable shock absorption and temperature control system under the wafer stage have become living textbooks for the advancement of domestic technology. Some people are curious about where the equipment disappeared, but the answer has long been written in China's own drawings. The research and development of domestic equipment has never been braked. It's just that the localization rate is only 2.5% now. Before it is completely independent, imports are still a rigid demand. The import of lithography machines is not simply based on quantity and production capacity. In fact, China is taking a double insurance route, which not only ensures the security of chip supply, but also wants to quickly remove the tightening curse of technology. If it can do 28 nanometers, the next step is 14 nanometers, or even finer processes. Don't forget that Shanghai Microelectronics has made obvious achievements in dismantling ASML's equipment in the past two years. Reverse research and development has accelerated the rush to produce China's own 28 nanometer lithography machine, and the pace is getting bigger and bigger. Who dares to say that disassembly is not a breakthrough in independent innovation? This matter looks like copying others' words, but it is actually a breakthrough. The United States has made a good calculation. It keeps saying that high-tech is safe, but in fact it is a whole business containment. But the situation is out of control. Whether ASML is willing or not is secondary. As long as the Western government issues a ban, this equipment can be stopped. But the Chinese have many ways. What is hoarded is not equipment, but a little bit of understanding of the technology chain, turning the passive domestic breakthrough into an active one. What is more troublesome for the United States is that these lithography machines not only overcome the difficulties of scientific research, but also become teaching materials in textbooks, bringing all the new generation of semiconductor talents into the actual playground. China's production line, people and machines are on the battlefield together, but basic research and teaching are followed up simultaneously, with a strategy of protecting the short with the left hand and raising the high with the right hand. The current pattern of domestic chips is connected to shipments on one end and grasping the innovation chain on the other end. Huawei High Silicon, Cambrian, Lungsen and other companies have long been close to the international frontier in high-end chip design capabilities. The yield rate of 14 nanometer chips can reach 90%, and even the news of 7 nanometer mass production is not groundless. Not to mention that Changjian Technology and Huaqian Technology 
are already shoulder to shoulder with global giants in the field of packaging. This is the so-called point-like breakthrough to chain-like coordination, and Chinese chips are accelerating on such a road. Of course, the United States can't stand it. Chip technology doesn't give you a good face, and the export of lithography machines is restricted layer by layer. But the more severe this blockade comes, the more it forces the Chinese people to innovate. However, in reality, is the effect of US sanctions really so precise? The answer is in front of the data. After the United States restricted exports to China, it could only watch about 15 billion US dollars in orders fly away. However, Chinese companies still purchase a large number of lithography machines, technical research continues to rise, and the chip ecosystem continues to grow. Looking back, the progress of chips in the Chinese military field is even more unexpected. The phased array radar carried by the J-20 relies on the independently developed gallium nitride chip, and its performance directly exceeds that of the US F-35. The guidance system of the Dongfeng missile also relies on the independently developed silicon carbide chip, and its anti-interference ability has reached a new level. The supply chain of military chips has stabilized, which is the situation that the United States is most afraid of seeing. The United States relaxed export restrictions on Chinese chip design software in July this year, and large manufacturers such as Siemens also resume supply. On the surface, it looks like a policy relaxation, but in fact it is the negotiation price obtained by China's rare earth counterattack, an active innovation game. Chinese chip companies took advantage of this window period to lay out innovations, not only did they not get stuck, but they also caused loopholes in the US's technological blockade. Who can you block? In the end, you will cover your own wallet. There is a fact that needs to be emphasized repeatedly. Today, China's chip production capacity accounts for 28% of the world, especially in the mature process fields such as automotive electronics, the Internet of Things, and industrial control. China is an indispensable pillar to alleviate the global chip shortage problem. Stockpiling lithography machines is not a waste of resources. This is a race with the United States and the West to turn the time window into China speed. As long as China announces that imports are no longer needed, the semiconductor industry landscape will be reversed in an instant. At present, China still has a gap in high-end equipment, and EUV lithography machines and 3 nanometer process equipment are not completely domestically produced. But as long as the chain continues to move forward, this situation will belong to China sooner or later. The more the United States blocks, the faster China's innovation pace will be. Forcing semiconductor companies to choose sides will only make the US industrial chain itself more costly and self-cut. The United States builds high walls, and China builds ladders, and the two sides have more and more different ideas. Who will win? Again, the answer may not be available now, but as long as China continues to move further and further on this innovation chess game, the overall situation is set.